Hi friends, welcome to the Bible Project daily podcast. The Bible Project is quite simply a strategy for us to work through the whole Bible chapter by chapter, verse by verse, in a series of daily podcasts Monday to Friday. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, it's worth telling you that there's always a transcript available of each and every one of these episodes of these talks. Uh, And you can access that that by going to any of the episode notes pages within any audio version of the podcast. No matter where you're receiving this from, what platform you're receiving it on, the audio version of the podcast is hosted on Buzzsprout, but it's available through all the main podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, even Amazon and all the others. And within every episode there should be an episode notes page and within that there are not only ways to link to various aspects of the ministry but there will be a transcript page which will have a full text of approximately what I've said. I'd also like to remind you that all these talks and the text and the transcripts are free for you to use in whatever way you want. A credit is always welcome but you can use them or reconstitute them or you can use them in any way at all to make your own Bible studies or to help even in the preparation of sermons or just use the framework to provide a sermon outline or a study. Please take them and run with them and use them with uh, whatever way you wish with my blessing. Now if you happen to be watching one of the video versions of the podcast on the likes of Facebook or YouTube, there should always be a link through to the audio version of the podcast where you'll find all the links and the episode notes and transcript there. You'll also find links within within the, the, the episode notes to things like my YouTube channel, the Facebook page, uh, and Patreon where there's lots more other teaching available. There's even a link to my sound design website where I create the music and the background sound scrapes for this podcast as well as other music and sound design projects that I do. But within that you'll also find an important link to my Patreon page where I do host exclusive content that I only make available to my patrons. There are some more formal structured discipleship courses that you can do uh, in a more sort of formal Bible study structured course contact. That, that you'll also find long-form Bible study teaching material which you can fu- choose to follow on and there's even uh, a course there where you can help develop your ability to preach or teach yourself. There's also a bonus material arriving all the time of talks I do in secular environments on things like theology, church history or, or where our Christian faith intersects with the secular world. That's the place where I place all the other audio and video material relating to talks I do outside of the Bible Project daily podcast. Places where I go and speak to groups and try and find an intersection point between Christian thinking and things like uh, the the thought and the teachings in areas of art, science, psychology, even mental health. But anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I do hope you're really benefiting from joining in this amazing podcast project together. The project is to help you make the part, the Bible part of the rhythm of your daily life as we work together and study together through this amazing book, the Bible, which Christians believe is indeed the inspired word of God. But that's it for now. And at this point, we'll jump right in and continue with the text in the main study. So today we're beginning a new section in the story of Jacob and we're dealing with Jacob uh, with Genesis chapter 28 and we'll be covering verses 10 to 22 over the next few days which is this famous passage of Jacob's dream at Bethel. Now what I'll do initially is I'll just read you the whole section of scripture we'll be covering over the next few podcasts and then I'll do what I'll always do which is work verse by verse expositionally through this passage over the next couple of days. So picking up the text exactly where we left off at the end of the last series of podcasts, which is uh, 28 verse 10, 
which tells us, Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a staircase resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I am not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. There is none other than the house of the God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head, and he set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I am taking, I will give, and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear, so that I can return safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God, and the stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And all of that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Okay, that's the text. And we're going to see uh, what that, we're going to dive into it now and just take a little bit of a close look. Now, we will remember that the starting point for for Jacob here is he's probably discouraged having had to flee his family. So let's just think about discouragement for a while. A few re- years ago, I read a book uh, and it gave the illustration of someone called Thomas Carlyle, a very famous historian who once spent two years writing his account of uh, an academic book on the French Revolution. When he got it done, he gave it to a friend of his, a very famous English philosopher and political economist called John Stuart Mill, who was also a famous figure in his own right. He gave it to him to read, I suppose we call it proof texting today, and for him to give him some notes and his impressions of what he thought. But while the book was in John Stuart Mill's house, The Unthinkable Happened. John Stuart Mill's servant used the only copy of the manuscript that existed as paper to start a fire, and it was completely burned up and destroyed. Two years of Carlyle's life and work were lost. Thousands of long, lonely hours were spent in writing that manuscript. No computers to back up in those days, He could not even imagine writing that book again. And needless to say, at that point, he wrote about how discouraged he became. Now, that's a dramatic example, but I'm sure all of us have been discouraged at times. Maybe think about the last time you were discouraged. I believe we all have times of discouragement. No one is immune from it. People get discouraged. Ironically, I know people who get discouraged because they're unable to find work, they can't find a job, and then when they do find one, they very soon get discouraged that the job isn't what they thought and things aren't working out for them as they hope. People, I also I also know many people who are trying very hard to get ahead financially, but find themselves discouraged all the time. Just when it seems that they're saving, getting a little bit of money saved in the bank or they're getting some financial security, something dramatic happens like the car breaks down or the like. People get discouraged with other people also, don't they? People get discouraged because their friends don't keep their promises or people who they thought were friends maybe gossip about them. And people also get discouraged with themselves when they perhaps fail to keep their own resolutions, when they maybe fail to stop drinking that they want to do, or for some Endless attempts to lose weight don't seem to work. Well, this is good news for us in this passage because today this is a story about a man in the Bible 
who no doubt must have been incredibly discouraged at the point and that's at this point and that's putting it mildly and the person we have in mind is of course Jacob now you will already know because we've covered part of his early story in the last few episodes where Jacob had deceived his father and deceived his brother Isaac in gaining his brother's birthright and tricking in his father into giving him his brother's blessing as a matter of fact he actually stole the birthright from his brother and his brother threatened to kill him so his mother says to him you know what Jacob you'd better get out of town before your brother kills you you just get out of town for a while and maybe your brothers and the family's anger will subside and in the future you can come back so Jacob fled and he must have been facing a very uncertain future this would certainly have been discouraging for him he was far from home and not sure if he would ever come back as a matter of fact he wasn't able to come back for over 20 years but at this point he didn't know what was going on and if he'd ever get home he had no assurance of security anymore he had no insurance of assurance of finding a wife finding meaningful occupation being able to find make a home for himself or even having his basic needs met he was seemingly all alone in a hostile world with no guarantees that he wouldn't be hunted down maybe even killed by his brother Esau or perhaps in this strange land even harmed by bandits or attacked by wild animals he was on the road all alone and no doubt must have been very discouraged so I, I believe there's something in this story that can help us if we're de dealing with frust uh, with discouragement or frustration one author i read who looked at the story said jacob was tired anxious frustrated and afraid living in solitude poor helpless and forsaken by man feeling all alone and fearing for his life that really is a catalogue of discouragement isn't it and the one thing he needed at this point was a little bit of encouragement and what happened for him wow well no less than the Lord himself encourages Jacob so let's just see how God encourages Jacob by going back and picking up the story and looking more closely and we'll start again at verse 10 where it told us Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran and when he reached a certain place he stopped for the night because the sun had set taking one of the stones there he put it under his head and lay down to sleep he had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it now let's just pause here for a second and I want to give you a little bit of setting of what's happened here verse 10 told us that he left Beersheba and he's going towards Haran now we know today the distance from Beersheba to Haran is around about a hundred miles and then verse 11 it says he comes to a certain place now later that place will be identified as Bethel because he uses a stone to mark it and that's what he calls that certain place and that happens in verse 19 it tells us that categorically and we of course we now know today that Bethel was over 70 miles from Beersheba so to put this into perspective he's barely got started on his journey He's one day into a journey that will probably take at least three days and three nights. But it's nightfall, the sun's setting, and he decides to stop and sleep for the night. He travelled by day, a day, and he now wants to sleep at night. So he takes one of the stones that are said to be there, and he puts it at his head and lays down on it in that place. It seems odd to say, but it appears he uses a stone as a pillow. Now that doesn't sound very comfortable, not to me at any rate, but it takes particular pains to point out that he was settling down for the night at the particular place which is marked by a stone and it calls particular attention to that stone because there's going to be a call back about it later. Now that's significant, it doesn't appear significant right now but it will become significant later and he falls asleep and then he has a dream. Now this is one of the most famous passages in all of the books of Genesis. Anybody who ever grew up going to church or as a child to Sunday school, I'm sure they've heard of the, the story of the dream of Jacob's ladder. I know I have. 
he a lot when I was younger. He dreamed and he had a vision from a ladder that went from earth and stretched to heaven. And it also tells us that there were angels, plural, angels of God ascending and descending on it. So I w what I want to say, the picture in my mind is a very tall ladder or set of, step of, of stairs as it's sometimes been illustrated in art with angels coming up and down that ladder stroke stairs. Jesus refers to this in John chapter 1. So this story actually appears twice in the Bible and the fact that Jesus references also would send us a message to say it has a significance and importance. So what in the world is the meaning and significance of the dream? Now I wondered that for years as a child. What is Jacob's ladder all about? What's the message going on here? What's the is Jacob being told by it? What is the significant that there are angels running up and down the ladder between heaven and earth? Well, I believe it's simply a pictorial way and a dream way of illustrating to Jacob the fact that there is communication between heaven and earth, that there is communion, fellowship between God and heaven, the heavenlies and earth. An early confirmation that there can be some kind of relationship, communication between people on earth and those in heaven. Some would say the earliest illustration of this idea. Now that's the setting and I think that's what God is wanting to illustrate not only to us today but particularly to Jacob then. Because remember this story appears before God had written his book. The account of it appears in the book, but the experience of the people involved in it, they had did not have the word of God at that time. Today, of course, the scriptures are the main ways that the heavenlies communicate with us here on earth. It is God's way, main way of communicating to men and women today. Someone once described to me the Bible as a set of love letters that God has written to his children. I like that. The scriptures are the word of God, the way God can speak directly into us and inspire, inspired by our Holy Spirit and that same spirit can empower that word into his lives. There is today still a communication from heaven. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? And it's recorded for us in this amazing book we call the Bible. Now, there's more to this dream. So let's just pick it up at verse 13, where it tells us, There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac. I will give your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and will spread out to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to do. Now this is the message. So let's see what that message is. What is the message that Jacob is being given here? Well, it appears in three parts. Verse says, for 13 said, Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and I give this land on which you lie to you. I will give it to you and your descendants. So this is the first thing he does. God restates the promise to Jacob, a promise that he's going to give him the land. God said, I'm going to make that promise that I'm going to give you the land that you're actually sleeping on right now. Now, we've heard that before, of course. If you've been with me as we've been going through the Genesis, you know that this is one of the major ideas of this whole book of Genesis. In fact, it's one of the major amazing ideas of the, ho of the whole of the, of the Bible in the Old Testament. God saying, I'm going to give the Jewish people this land. I'm going to give them the land of Canaan. So he first gave that promise to Abraham way back in chapter 12. Then he gave it to Isaac. And now today in this dream, he restates it to Jacob. As a matter of fact, this verse says, I am the God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac. And the significance of the promise is that it was given to your grandfather, 
Abraham, I promised it also to your father, Isaac, and now I'm promising it to you. But there's more to the promise. Look at verse 13. He also says your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the east, to the north, to the west and the south. Now this is something that has been said before. It's what we call the Abrahamic co covenant. Namely, you're going to get the land and he's going to multiply their descendants. I'm going to multiply the descendants so they become like the sand of the seashore or the stars in heaven that's said in the previous passages. But this time he says it's going to be almost like the dust on the earth. In other words, the promise is restated. He's going to multiply his descendants to such a great extent that it would be impossible to count them. Now remember that he told Abraham and he told Isaac that out of them there are going to become many nations. So that's important to make a note of that because that's just another way of reinforcing the fact that Abraham is the great patriarch and so are you, Jacob. And out of you are going to become many, are going to come many, many, many people, innumerable, innumerable descendants. And of course, we're going to find out as we follow the story of Jacob along that he will in fact have 12 sons and those 12 sons will will become the 12 uh, tribes of Israel and out of that will come the whole Jewish race. So that's the promise God made to Abraham, he made to Isaac and now he's making it to Jacob and it is clearly fulfilled in the salvation history that is continually revealed through this, the Bible. So the first promise was to give the land, the second promise was to give a multitude of, multitude of descendants and then the third part of the promise is revealed in the closing part of this dream narrative in verse 15. He says, I'm going to give you the land, I'm going to multiply your descendants. And thirdly, he says, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed through your descendants. So that begs the question, how will God's promise to the Jewish nation, the Jewish people, bless the whole world? That's what's being claimed here. Well, the answer, friends, is that this is a veiled reference to the coming Messiah, the Messiah who will be a saviour for the whole world. Well, we'll unpack that a little bit more in the next episode. OK, friends, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'd like to remind you that you can access lots of more of my teaching, including long form versions of my Bible teaching. And you can access that material alongside discipleship courses. In fact, I am in the process of currently creating and preparing an expository preaching course, as well as some stuff on the development of Christian thought and church history. Along with that, there will be material of and recordings of talks I've done in secular environments where I've tried to intersect the Christian faith with things like art, mental health and psychology. And these are all available to access on my Patreon website or will be coming available. The main work, the Bible study uh, daily podcast will always be the main thing and will always be free, uh, freely available to anybody who wants to access. But these other uh, teaching sources are available on my Patreon website and I'll be loading that up over the next weeks and months. So if you sign up there and become a patron, you will be safe in the knowledge that you're not only getting early access to my main material and also additional material, but importantly, you are supporting my ministry and particularly allowing the Bible Project Daily Podcast to be made available freely to lots of people. By becoming a patron, you are enabling the Daily Podcast to reach more and more people. And it's also really helpful help develop that vision that if you are enjoying it and appreciating it then please consider liking and subscribing to it on whatever flat platform and in whatever way you happen to be accessing it by doing that that enables the bible studies to be seen across whatever realms you happen to inhabit digitally so that really helps the word of god and its life-changing power get out there but anyway, friends, that's it for today. I've really enjoyed our time together. I hope you're benefiting from being a part of this amazing project as we journey through the entire Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, 
I really couldn't do this without you and without your support and your encouragement and your prayer. And I hope I can see you right back here very soon. It'll be tomorrow for me, but whatever day it happens to be for you. But I do hope you'll join me again as we join together right back here on the Bible Project Daily Podcast. Bye-bye for now.